And for those of you who do not know, the No More series is where we interview different overcomers that have overcome an area or obstacle in their life. And so um, today we have a special guest here. Go ahead and say hello to our reviewers, Erica. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today, Mary. Awesome, awesome. And I'm so excited. Um, and I just thank you for coming up on my platform and sharing um, your testimony, your story of overcoming. I know it's going to bless many people all over the world. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. And so if you can tell, okay. yes, if you can tell our viewers today, um, what area or obstacle have you overcome? Yes, I know many of y'all are listening, like, there's so many areas you can think of that you've overcome in life. But I love this topic, Mary, because even the whole message behind No More, yes. to me, it's just so, uh, I'm just so pumped about it because I feel like people need to hear it. So for me, the area that I've overcome specifically, like, or more recently, I would say, was a natural disaster that came to my town. And I'll never forget when it came, um, one, because I lost my home and everything, or most everything in it. But also because I was not prepared. Um, I had a family member come in town and they were like, hey, you guys, be careful. See you later. And I'm like, be careful for what? So I had no, I wasn't paying attention. I don't really watch the news like that. So I probably had just a few hours to prepare to evacuate when they, um, the storm shifted its path and was coming um, towards the town I live in. And so when it shifted its path, we had a few hours to gather what was important. So just to, to start, that was eye-opening for me because I realized that in those urgent moments, you learn what matters. And so I came back and discovered that we had lost, again, like most everything that I own, but it was definitely a refreshing and a starting point for so much that God has been able to do since then. So that's one area. Experiencing um, the loss, and you said the loss was unexpected, and life does hit us sometimes in unexpected ways, and we don't know, you know, like, what we're going to do, or we can go easily into a panic mode and kind of freak out. Um, so tell me a little, how did you handle that? Absolutely, we go into panic mode. Um, I know that it's so amazing to me because, as I say, it was unexpected. I will say that I remember starting that year off, and I'm just out in the streets like, yes, y'all, this is a year of overflow. I had dreams about flooding. <laughs> um, the song I was listening to all year was about the overflow. And even I remember probably like a month or two prior in my prayer time, I had this sense of urgency around just packing. And if I would have fully listened, many of the things that I lost, I would not have lost. I lost my mm -hmm. inventory and things. But if I would have packed, only the stuff that I packed up ahead of time is what I was able to keep. And that's because it was already packed. So when I didn't have much time, I was able to pull those things out. And I didn't know why I was feeling that urgency. So um, I definitely, I was panicked, I would say, but I do know, like, it wasn't the first time that I experienced, not an actual disaster, but that kind of thing. And so it just taught me to practice what I preach. I remember as soon as it happened, one of the things that was, like, top of mind for me is what can we do in the community? Because though I had family and places to go, I knew that there were so many people because so much of our city was devastated. So many people didn't have any resources and a way to bounce back. So that was actually one of my first reactions. I remember I um, evacuated to Atlanta and I was traveling back and like coordinating a recovery uh, event for other people just because I knew that I was just blessed. I didn't, we didn't lose lives in our family at that time. There were just so many blessings in that challenge that I couldn't even complain. As, I'm sure I had some sad moments, too, but <laughs> I couldn't fully focus on complaining when I thought about everything that did work out. Yes, that is awesome. And so you, wow, you were not only did you have a setback, but so you were prepared because you said you were packing up things. You were packing and you didn't even know why you were packing things up. So you were being prepared for something that was coming. And then not yeah, only, was, yeah. yes, but not only that, you were able to help other people, even in your loss. So I want to dig a little deeper into that, even in your loss, even where it seems like, you know, you just got slapped with an unexpected thing, you were still able to help somebody else. So tell us a little about that and where did that come from? Yes, well, part of it is just from when you're going through something that may be overwhelming and when you may be going through something that is stressful, I know and I've learned just from a mindset standpoint is to keep yourself occupied. Like, don't get idle. Don't marinate on the problem. Like, be anxious for nothing. So that was part of it. I knew that I had to start um, prioritizing what can I do something about, do that, and what can't I do anything about. And a lot of stuff I couldn't do anything about it at that time. So the one thing that I thought about that I could do was just be a blessing to someone else. 
many other factors that could have made it worse. And all I could do was just be thankful because had we not listened, had my family not listened, had many people not listened, they would have lost their lives in that flood and in that storm. And so I think that's what helped me because I will never forget my children were the ones that reminded me of the silver lining where I wanted to get frustrated and I wanted to go into that place of woe is me. It was like literally like my children saying, gosh, you know, the only thing I remember my daughter saying this, the only thing that she was upset about was that when she lost all of her toys, that meant she couldn't give them to someone else. Wow. Like just a shame that they took away. And I'm like, where do y'all <laughs> where do y'all get this? You know, this thought thought process. But what I know is that when we think we're going through something, it's easy to be so focused on ourselves that we don't realize everyone i probably can say with like 100 percent certainty that at some point in time everyone is going to something so we can't it's easy to become selfish but when we think of it like that it's also easy to figure out when you don't feel so blessed you probably have the key to bless somebody else and that's what i've seen over and over in my life i love it i love it because wow that's how god works like, that's how God works. He'll use you in the midst of what you think is chaos and confusion or chaos in the storm or the unexpected stuff. He'll be like, okay, now, yeah, I allow this to happen so that you can show my light in the earth, so that you can be an example. And then even when you were feeling down, see, this is how amazing God is. Even when you were feeling down, your kids reminded you because at that moment you had forgot the things of what God was saying. You have forgot what you were teaching them. And so we plant these seeds in our children. They look at us, they see us do life. They see the way we respond. And so when you were at a low place, God allowed your child to show you, you, to remind you of his word through, through her actions. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. God is so amazing. And so you were helping everybody else um, what was your thoughts? What was your mindset? I probably had a lot of thoughts <laughs> at that time. <laughs> I know I've been through probably like every level or every stage of grief, as they say, because it was devastating, like seeing so many other people like go through that. But it also, it put things into perspective. So for me, um, when I really thought about it, even at that time, I was already doing speaking, doing events, and inspiring people, and writing books, to the point I remember when I evacuated, I had an interview scheduled, and actually, I feel like I had several interviews um, scheduled at that time, but I remember one in particular, I had to talk about my book, and I was just, it was, we're still trying to figure out the pool of um, loss, I'm looking at a uh, major media outlet, and it's showing like my street, and I'm seeing like the home that I'm familiar with, covered in water, and I had to like feel away. Um, and do this interview, and it was just so powerful to me because because I was talking about one of my own books, and there, you know, the uh, the host was just asking me different questions about some of the things that I taught, and it was just a reminder, like practice what you preach. Yes. And so sometimes when we go through those tough moments, we can get frustrated, but God is literally like strengthening us, and He tells us that His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Mm -hmm. So He's like dealt with an area for you, and you're going back to your helping other people. We're usually attacked or challenged the most in the areas that we're a blessing in, the areas that we're going to help more people in is what, you know, where our challenges come. So that's why I think I learned the most in that time. Awesome. I love it. Wow. God is amazing. And it's, I'm just stuck on the fact that in the middle of your uncertain moment, he still used you. And a lot of times we feel like things have to be perfect in order for us to go forth. But you said, even in the midst of this, I still had interviews lined up and I had to talk about a book, but around you it was chaotic and you're in houses in your own neighborhood were flooded out, but you were still supposed to go forth, put away everything that you were dealing with and, and still go forth. Wow. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, that's, that's personal to me. I'm just basing in that because that's so good. Um, <laughs> yes. So I do want to ask you, um, so during this moment of uncertainty, what if you came across um, an individual that was going through a moment of uncertainty? What kind of advice would you give to that person to kind of give them that hope 
and give them um, that strength and that courage that they need to just know that, okay, it's going to get better. Ooh, I would say celebrate in that uncertainty. Celebrate. Because we live in this, and I know many of y'all probably hear this a lot, this microwave time. We live in this, whether it's coming through prophetic messages, um, people reading horoscopes, anything. Like, everyone wants to know the future. And I'm definitely, I'm not a doctor for the horoscope. Or anything. I'm just using that as an example where we can get so used to information and things being at our fingertips that we feel like we cannot move unless we have all the answers. But I was actually just sharing this with someone that God is the God of now. And we know that because there are so many things and reminders in this word. And I'll use a couple of examples. One of my favorite verses is Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And it goes on to say, do not worry about tomorrow sufficient for today in its own trouble. And yes. even when they ask Jesus, like, how do we pray? And he said, uh, give us today our daily bread. Today. And so... I would say if you feel like you're in a place of uncertainty, when you feel like you're in that waiting season, when you feel like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen, and right now sucks. Like, right now is not good. One thing that you can do is find something to be grateful for. When you're not sure what the next step is, when you don't know that next move, rest and sit in a place of thanksgiving and gratitude like never before. I have so many lists from that time where I would make myself, because I was in tears, I'm not even going to sit here and act like, yeah. You know, hand out lollipops. Like, no, there were some dark days. Oh, yeah. But I would just make a list of like 100 things I'm thankful for. And I would not stop until I could come up with 100 things. And it could be like privilege stuff. So get thankful, get grateful in the uncertainty. Wow. That's good. That is so good. Celebrate. Can you praise yeah. before you see it? <laughs> can you praise? Yeah. A lot of people say, can you praise them in the hallway? Yes, I get it. Oh, that is so good. And thank you for, thank you for that. That just the encouragement. Um, is there anything else that you feel led to touch on? Um, just speaking from your heart, because I don't like, I don't like things to be scripted. Like, I know you've been through some things, you have wisdom, um, things you can share. And so is there anything that you feel led to share concerning, you know, life or what you've overcome? So what stands out to me is that today, for every single person listening right now, including ourselves, today is the youngest that we're ever going to be for the rest of our lives. And so it's so important that we don't put off for tomorrow. Don't wait to do those things that you feel called to do. And even if you don't, which we just talked about, even if you don't have all the answers, I believe that it's not a coincidence the things that we desire to do. That each and every one of us were born, called, have a purpose, yes. and there is something that requires your attention and your energy each day. So focus on that. Um, because I I say that from the standpoint that it breaks my heart when I just come in contact with so many people that will talk about something that they desire to do. They are watching you right now, Mary. They're so inspired by what you're doing. And there's a seed. There's something that God has placed in them. But that doubt comes in or that not feeling good enough comes in or that procrastination or believing we have another many people of the stamp and the legacy that they were meant to leave and so I think that that is what I would want to drive home today is that today is the youngest you're ever going to be so don't delay um, your purpose don't delay even that one action that you can take right now absolutely you are so right and, and thank you for sharing your wisdom I don't even think I have something to come back on because that's so that's so good it's, it's so good and I could elaborate, but it's, that's just it. Like we try to put things off or we, we procrastinate or we, you know, what's crazy. God will give you an idea. And if you don't move your feet and do it, you'll see somebody else doing it. And then you have the nerve to get mad because they took that leap. <laughs> yes, that is a whole mic drop right there. That's so true. Because they took the leap, because they didn't have the whole blueprint, but they had a word from the Lord. They had an idea, they had a desire, and they just ran with it. And so we'll sit back with our arms folded like, huh, how can they do that? That was my idea. And where is your faith? Because faith is moving even when you don't see the whole thing, just the little pieces that you got. What are you going to do with the little talents that he give you? 
Oh my goodness, don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> Yes, but I love it, Erica. I just want to thank you for sharing your wisdom, um, just sharing your experience of how we we must persevere, even in the midst of a storm, even in the midst of chaos. Um, we have to put our flesh and our emotions to the side because there's lives depending on us to move forward in that thing that God has told us to do. Yeah, so I just want to thank you for just moving forward and persevering and being steadfast in the things of the Lord so that he could continue to work and move in your life. Thank you for so, Erica Latrice to go ahead and share with our audience um, how they can get in contact with you. What kind of things do you have going on? Any of your websites or anything? Um, because I know people are watching and I don't have it all and I don't have all the answers, but I believe that your wisdom can help somebody too. So go ahead and share with us your information. Um, thank you for this opportunity. So if you are watching right now, you know that you're ready to take a leap. I do have two resources for you. Um, the first one is called the Focus Fast, and it's three um, three videos that you can watch if you go to thefocusfast.com. Because I also believe that a lot of the reason that we don't take the action that we need to is because we don't have consistency, structure, understanding, mindset, things in place. We're not rooted in our purpose. So many things. Um, so I share a little bit of my story, and it's a gift to you if you want to um, get started and start setting your day up in a way that you're going to be fruitful. And the other thing is that I have a community, an online community that you can join with other like-minded women that are out trying to be amazing and actually being amazing, not just trying. Yes. And it's called Amplify Her, so you can go to AmplifyHerLounge.com, like L-O-U-N-G-E, and that gives you a free membership, access to the community, and just get fed and bring Mary with you. We all can connect in that space and just keep each other present for you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. And any social media handles you would like to share? Oh, yes. Yeah. You, so you can follow me anywhere on, or most everywhere on social media at Erica Empowers and it's Erica Spell with a T Empowers and that's across social media. All right, perfect. And then I'll make sure everything is linked down below, give people easy access so we have no excuses to not get the help that we need to move forward and be the all be all that God has called us to be. And so, Erica, I just want to thank you again for um, coming on my platform and sharing here your wisdom today with with everybody, even me included. I thank you for your transparency and being open because a lot of times we can talk about the high moments. You know, but nobody talks about the low place. You don't see that often. And so this is what this platform is about. Just, you know, showing people that, hey, although you see me up here like this, I, I was in a valley before. And if I made it out the valley, you can get out the valley as well. Amen. Like that's your next shirt. <laughs> just need to come out. It's just Mary, and then put amen at the bottom. Because I swear, every day, time you say something, it's like amen, amen, amen to that. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> but I thank you, and I love you, and we will stay connected. Yes, I love you, hugging you back, and all those things. And thank you, Mary, for taking me to be on the show. You are very welcome. You have a wonderful day.